Hi everyone, we're going to be talking about what to do when you're really angry or when you feel like you have a habit of anger. And uh, it's totally normal and totally natural to be angry, but that doesn't mean that it's necessary. And there's a few different ways to look at it so that it doesn't rule your whole life. So we're going to read a book called Oz Anger. Here we go. Oz Anger by Gail Silver. Illustrations by Christiane Krumar. Ong was in the living room building a tower, the tallest tower he'd ever built. His grandfather was in the kitchen making dinner. On, grandfather called out, dinner is ready. On added a yellow block and smiled. The tower was almost as tall as he was. Now the red one, Ahn whispered, placing a red block on the very top. Grandfather came in from the kitchen. What a wonderful tower. It's not done yet, Ahn told him. Come sit down, Grandfather said. You can play more after we eat. He set the plates on the table and returned to Ahn who was balancing a green block on top of the red one. Put your blocks down now, said Grandfather. Dinner is getting cold. On wanted to keep playing. He opened his mouth to speak, but his bottom lip quivered and words wouldn't come. On's eyes filled with tears and he started to cry. Grandfather tried to put his arm around Ong, but Ong pushed him away, knocking the tower over and sending the blocks flying. Go away, I hate you, Ong shouted. You're upset, said Grandfather. Please go to your room and sit with your anger. I'll come in when you're calm and able to talk. Ong ran to his room, leapt onto his bed. His cries grew so strong, he could feel them all the way down in his belly. How do I sit with my anger, he wondered. I'm so angry, angry, angry. Finally, said a voice, I was hoping you would notice me. On lifted his head and came face to face with a hairy red creature. Who are you, asked On, and how did you get into my room? I'm your anger, said the creature. You brought me here. My anger? The anger nodded. Did grandfather see you come in? I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. Don't worry, Ang, I'm not a stranger. I'm the part of you that comes out when things don't go your way. I'm right here every time you get angry. I know you feel scared when I'm around. I can make you cry and want to hit things. I can even make you say mean things to people you love. Ang's anger started to turn the knob of the bedroom door. Come on, he said, I'll show you. Ang was tempted, but grandfather had said to stay in the room. Wait, Ong called. Maybe we can do something in here. Ong's anger turned and extended his hairy hand. I know just the thing, he said. Ong took his anger's hand and together they danced all around the room. They raised their arms overhead and spun wide circles. They used their breath to make sounds like a strong howling wind. They got down on their knees and pounded the ground with their hands. It sounded like they were playing drums on the earth and on like that. Finally, they were exhausted and ready to be still. Ong and his anger sat together silently. They sat, they breathed in, they breathed out. And they sat some more. I don't like to say mean things to people, said Ong, but sometimes I can't help it. I can help you, said his anger. How can you help? I thought you were the one who was making me do these things in the first place. That's true, but I'm also your friend. Whenever you feel angry, you should come and sit with me. After we spend some time together, you might feel better. Spending time with you is kind of fun, Ong said. Do you want to stay for dinner? I think I'll be gone before dinner, said his anger. Are you sure, said Ong. 
We're having ice cream for dessert. Ong's anger smiled and Ong smiled back. Ong was tired. He took a deep breath and had a, <clears throat> Ong was tired. He took a deep breath and let out a little sigh. <sighs> and when he did, his anger became smaller. Anna's anger continued to breathe together. With each in-breath, Anna's anger got a little bit smaller. And with each out-breath, Anna felt a little bit better. And with each out-breath, Anna felt a little better. Ong heard gentle tapping on his bedroom door. It was his grandfather. Grandfather and Ong sat together. I'm sorry I didn't listen, said Ong. I was really angry. I wanted to keep playing. Grandfather took Ong in his arms. Thank you for your kind words, he said. I sat with my anger like you asked, Ong said, but we didn't just sit. We danced and played too. Do you want to meet him? Ong looked up, but his anger was gone. Grandfather, said Ong, do you know what happened? I think I do, said Grandfather. You took good care of your anger and it went away. That's right, said Ong. How did you know? When I was a little boy, I met with my anger too. Really? Was it because of the blocks? No, laughed Grandfather. There were no blocks, just frogs, a lily pond, and a sun that wouldn't set. Come, let's eat dinner, and I'll tell you my story. The end. So I hope you liked that story, and I hope you understood a little bit more about your own anger and how it doesn't make any sense to ignore it and pretend it's not there. But also, we don't want to free it and let it out all over the place so it hurts people. Just sit with it. See what it has to say. Let the energy of it move through. So what do you think you'll do the next time you get angry? See ya.